Hi friends, hope you are all doing fine. Today I am going to discuss about the F1 visa and how you can get this visa. So this is a visa which is required if you want to come to the US to do a degree, whether it's a bachelor's degree, master's degree or PhD degree. And essentially if you are a foreign student, you would require this visa. Now the first thing you need to do to get this visa is to get admission into a US university and once you get admission to the US university the university is going to send you a document known as the I-20 form and this document is very important because this is the document which is required by you to get the visa at the consulate or the embassy. So let's discuss some things about the I-20. Now, essentially, if you are an international student, you can get the I-20 form. Now, this form is only given out by universities which are recognized by the US government under something known as the SEVP or the Student and Exchange Visitor Program. And essentially what this document certifies is that you can now apply for the F1 visa and you will essentially get the non immigrant student status. So that's very important phrase to keep in mind. Now once you get this particular I-20 document you have to pay the service fee and then you can go to the consulate or embassy to get your visa. So now when you pay the service fee there are a few things to keep in mind. Some of these are that you have to give your name, address, date of birth and email, your country of birth, your country of citizenship, your school code which you will get from the I-20 form and the service number which you also get from the I-20 form. So these are some information which are required. Now you can go for the F1 visa as much as 120 days before your visit is due to the United States or before your college is starting. So you have a lot of time and given the general delays in visa processing and so on, I would recommend that you take advantage of this, you apply for the visa as soon as you can. Now I have mentioned in some previous videos also that this I-20 form is very important. You need to keep this form very safely throughout your degree program and this is the form which you always need to also show to the officer when you come at the airport. So in addition to the F-1 visa which is tabbed on the passport you always need to carry around this I-20 form. So now let us look at some of the things you require after all these documents have been obtained. So like I mentioned before, you now need to go to the website and you need to fill in your DS-160 form. So this is a typical form which is required to get any type of visa. So you need to fill this form specifically mentioning that you are applying for the I-20 form based F1 visa. So one of the useful websites for all this information is travel.state.gov. So you can go here and check out student visa and a lot of information about that. So now I will tell you some facts which are important for getting this visa. Now once the university has given you the admission letter, you have got your I-20, you may think why do you need to go through all this further information because you have provided the information to the university about some of your financial background, your transcripts, your SAT scores and so on. Now the thing about the counselor system which I feel they do is they trust but verify. So again this is something which Ronald Reagan said long time ago and essentially now they are going to verify if you are really the person you claim to be and whether you are going to be able to actually do this degree in the US and you're not somebody who actually is going to go there and not have a fulfilling student life. So one of the first things they look at is they look at your financial status and this is very important because you need to be able to make your payments as far as tuition, cost of living, health insurance, travel, food, all these things are concerned in the US and that can be very expensive depending on your home country. Now if you are a graduate student who has obtained a fellowship or scholarship this is not so important but then this will still be mentioned on your 
various uh, uh, admission letters and so on and so they will use that fact to make sure that you can pay for your stay in the United States. So any kind of financial aid letter, scholarship letter, salary will be important. Now, one thing you should always keep in mind if you are a UG student is that they are going to rely on your parents' income. And so you may need to give your parents bank statement and you may need to give their salary slips, you may need to give information about their tax returns. And this is very important because there are a number of people, especially sometimes they are businessmen who do not file taxes regularly or they may be showing income which is much lower than their real income. And in that case, the officer may feel that, hey, this person will not be able to meet the requirements of staying in the US. So this is something you need to keep in mind as to what is the income they are declaring because the consulate is going to rely on this number to essentially give you the visa. Now, beside this, they are also sometimes going to ask you for your transcripts, for your SAT scores, for your degrees, diplomas, and so on. Now, the reason they may ask you some of these things, and I think this is a random process, but there is some thinking behind this, is they ask a few probing questions and try to figure out that you are actually the candidate who is essentially applying for the visa. So what they want to make sure is the documentation and the person match. So for example, if you have a very good uh, SAT score, SAT score, there's a general expectation that your English proficiency is going to be very good, that you will be able to figure out meaning of various complex words which may be just interspersed in their speech. That's something which people can see at that point. They'll also ask you some probing questions about your high school, about your college, about your teachers, about the courses you have taken, about the different courses you're going to do, about your further plans and so on. So in all these cases, they are trying to essentially figure out, have you given thought to some of these issues as to what are you going to do in the long term as a student? What are your plans following your PhD or your master's degree or your bachelor's degree and so on? So one of the things they would like to see is that you have a path which actually leads you back to your home country and to continue there. Because remember always the F1 visa is a non-immigrant visa. So you are not supposed to have intent to migrate at this point. Maybe sometime later you may change your mind and so on. That's always possible because these visas let you have dual intent. But the bottom line is when the person is giving you the visa, at that point you need to have a clear path to finish your degree, come back to your home country and do something there, whether it is to work in some industry, whether it is to start a new company, maybe you work in a multinational company, a US company, maybe you may want to become a college professor or teacher. All these things you need to keep in mind and you need to be ready with the answers. Now, some of the reasons why the F1 visas get rejected are very similar to why other visas get rejected. One of these is that the student is not able to make a good case financially about why they are going to US and can they support themselves there. The second is the student does not seem to be sufficiently mature or sufficiently clear about the objectives they have. And this can be judged to some extent by the officer concerned. I also sometimes feel that students talk too much and uh, sometimes they do not talk at all. They do not make eye contact properly and sometimes they are too verbose in their talking. So again, the kind of middle ground is possible. Whenever you are talking to an officer, you need to only answer the questions that are asked and you need to answer these very carefully and very appropriately. So it's very important to present something known as your best self at this point, because all human beings have a true self and then they have a best self. So the best self is like putting your best feet forward. And so whenever you are going to these kind of interview scenarios, you need to make sure that your best self is coming forward. And then you will have much less problem as far as getting the F1 visa is concerned. So this was my take on how to get the F1 visa. I obtained this visa. 
long ago and many of my students have also obtained this visa so this is your gateway if you want to get into the higher education system in the US and so I wish you best of luck in getting this visa and pursuing your study whether it be in the bachelor's level the master's level or the PhD level so I'll end this video here and I will see you soon in a new video see you then